cut. Hey what's up guys, this is Jack Tiong and welcome back to the 6th episode of Java tutorial video on this channel. In the previous episode, we have learned about Java commands which are basically the statements that will be ignored by the compiler. And in this episode, we are going to learn about one of the fundamental building blocks of Java program known as the decision making statements. With that being said, let's get started. Now what is a decision making statement? Decision making statement allows you to make decision based upon the result of a condition and it's basically being used to control the flow of execution of statements. There are basically four different decision-making statements which includes the if-then statement, if-then-else statement, switch statement, as well as the ternary operator which we have already covered a little bit in episode 4. The if-then statement is the most basic form of decision-making statement and it looks something like this, where we have the if keyword, the condition to be tested, and lastly the statements to be executed, also known as the then close. What it does is basically to tell your program to execute one or more statements within the then close if and only if the condition is true. If the condition is false however, the statements within the then close will not be executed and will be ignored. Now assuming that we have declared a variable named score with an int value of 85. And since 85 is more than 50, the condition will be evaluated as true and the statements within the if clause will be executed. One thing to take note here is that the opening and closing braces are optional if the then close contains only one statement. In other words, these two formats will basically do the same thing and return the same result, but these two will not. Because if you omit the braces, the system will only consider the first statement comes right after the if keyword as the then close. Now deciding on whether to omit the braces is purely a matter of personal taste. But if you ask me, I always include the braces to prevent any unnecessary logical errors. Alright, now that we have seen how we can use the if then statement, where the statements within the then close will be executed if the condition is true. Now what if we need to execute some certain statements if the condition is false? This is where the if then else statement comes in handy because it provides a secondary path of execution when an if close evaluates to false. The structure of an if then else statement looks something like this, where we have the if keyword, the condition to be tested, the statements to be executed if the condition is true, and followed by the else keyword as well as the statement to be executed if the condition is false. Alright, let's take a look at this example. Assuming the score variable is now having the value of 40, and since 40 is not more than 50, this condition will be evaluated as false, and the statements within the else clause will be executed instead. Other than that, the if then else statement also has the ability to support multiple conditions by using the optional else if statement like this. However, there are a couple of rules that we need to keep in mind if we were to use the optional else if statement. An if statement can have 0 or 1 else statement and it must come after the else if statements. An if statement can have 0 to many else if statement and they must come before the else statement. And lastly, once a condition is being evaluated as true, none of the remaining else if or else statements will be tested. Alright, now let's take a look at this example. Assuming the score variable is now having the value of 65, and since 65 is not less than 50, the first if condition will be evaluated as false, and the system will proceed with the second if condition. And since 65 is not in between 51 and 60, the second if condition will be evaluated as false too. However, in the third if condition, it will be evaluated as true, and the statement within that particular then close will be executed. After that, the rest of the else if and else statements will be ignored. In addition to that, Java programming also allows us to have nested if statements, which basically means putting one if statement inside of another. Other than the if then and if then else statement, Java also provides us with another option called switch statement. What it does is basically to allow a variable to be tested for equality against the list of values and it looks something like this. Each value is called a case and the variable being switched on is checked for each case. However, there are a couple of rules that we need to take note if we were to use a switch statement. A switch statement can work with byte, short, char and in primitive data types. And it also works with enumerated types, string, as well as a few special classes that wrap certain primitive types, such as character, byte, short, and integer. Don't worry if you don't understand some of the types mentioned, as we'll go through some of them in the later episodes. We can have any number of case statements within a switch. Each case is followed by the value to be compared to and a colon. The value for a case must be the same data type as the variable in the switch, and it must be a constant or a literal. 
When the variable being switched on is equal to a case, the statements following that case will be executed until a break statement is reached. And when a break statement is reached, the switch terminates and the flow of the control jumps to the end of the switch statement. Although the break statement is not mandatory, but it is necessary, or else it will fall through to subsequent cases until a break is reached. A switch statement can have an optional default case, which must appear at the end of the switch, and the default case will be executed if none of the cases are true. And lastly, the limitation of a switch statement is it doesn't support logical operators. And if we do something like this, the compiler will throw us a compilation error. This is in fact one of the reasons why the if then else statement is more popular and will be used in most of the cases. Alright, last but not least, we have the ternary operator, which is basically the shortest syntax for the if then else statement. And it looks something like this where the first operand is a boolean expression. And if the expression is true, then the value of the second operand will be returned. Otherwise, the value of the third operand will be returned. In addition, the second and third operand of the ternary operator are not only for a simple variable or a constant. It can be a call to a method as well. Again, deciding on whether to use the if then else statement or the ternary operator is purely a matter of personal taste. But in most cases, especially when we need to deal with lots of nested if statements, I'll definitely choose if then else statement over the ternary operator. Alright, that's it guys. We have learned about the four different decision-making statements that are being offered by Java, which includes the if-then statement, if-then-else statement, switch statement, as well as the ternary operator. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you like the video, be sure to hit on the like button, share it to your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.